Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie. Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington. Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson. Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Stephen Cord is on a painful mission. He must examine the effects of his sister, the late Anne Howard. Dr. Michael Rossi, who had planned to marry Anne, has been avoiding just such an examination for some time. Today, it is found he can no longer put it off. Mike, I tried to reach you at the hospital. What are you doing, Steve? Well, I'm going to take Anne's things. I thought you might want to come with me. There might be something there you'd like to keep. I don't think I'll need anything to remind you of Anne. Suit yourself. Steve? She had so much time, you know. Time for all the plans, all the things that she... The things that we were gonna do together. Make up for the past, you know. So much time. Well, he's gonna pay for it. What? Lee Weber's time is running. Side. Come on, will you forget that you're a lawyer this one time, please? You don't have a lock on grief. Mike, she was my sister. All right, then act like it. Don't go talking to me about the due process of laws. I have to. Why? Why can't you act like everyone else? Shout or get angry or something. Your sister was killed by Lee Weber. I'm defending Weber. I didn't want to tell you this way. I do. Why? Because he asked for me, and I'm a lawyer. What you hear? You, you just got through telling me how grief-stricken you are, how hollow it made you feel. And now you tell me you're going to defend the man that killed her? That hasn't been proven. But she was your sister. She was disturbed. Oh, don't tell me that. It's true. She was happy. We were going to get married. There were things in her past she couldn't forget, things that wouldn't let her forget. And they drove her to... To what? To her death. Oh, that's a lie. You're really quick, aren't you, Cord? I mean, you're agile. You're ready to jump through any hoop that makes its appearance, aren't you? Whether it's inconvenient or not. I didn't expect you to understand. I understand, all right, sure. This is front page stuff. Sure, I can see it now, the big bold black headline. The candid shots of the dedicated young lawyer ready to defend the principles of the underdog. Only this underdog happens to be the man that killed your sister. Human interest story, sure. I can see all the possibilities. Only this time, it doesn't make any difference whether you turn out the hero, does it? No. Because this time, the only thing that's important is whether or not they spell out the C-O-R-D.
What are you going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cram those headlines down your throat until you choke on their lies. <laughs> It's so easy to get into this joint and so tough to get out. This is between you and me. Thanks. Look, in case I didn't say it before, thanks for springing it. Well, that's part of the job, Lee. Come over here. Now, how good are you at listening? Try me. I'm going to give you some rules, and you're going to learn every one of them. Sure. One. You stay close to home. You don't take any midnight strolls on the beach. No late dates at the shoreline. Two, you don't so much as sneeze without my okay. And three, you don't talk to anyone unless they talk to you. And what do I say? You just smile and shrug. Are you going to change my diapers and wipe my nose too? If that'll keep you out of trouble, yes. Oh, come on, counsel. I'm not finished yet. The minute you walk out that door, your trial starts. Everyone that knows you or has heard of you or knows someone who has heard of you is going to be watching. What for? To see whether you're innocent or guilty. I can take care of myself. You want to walk back into your cell and try that statement again? Okay, okay. I got you bail, but that's not a passport to heaven. It's a straitjacket, and we're both inside it. Well, what kind of a cat do you think I am? A restless cat, Lee. A cat who doesn't know which way he's going to jump until he lands. And that's why I'm keeping the leash nice and short. Understood? Well, I'm not about to do anything to get me thrown back in this hole. That's right, you're not. And as long as you remember that, you still have a lawyer. Fair enough. Weber. It's not over yet. I've got faith. You'll be in my office tomorrow at 9 o'clock. We'll start preparing your defense. Anything you say. Well, goodbye, Lee. So long, Counselor. I want you to be worried, see? We take all the patient's valuables for safekeeping. I'm sorry. I, I hope I didn't sound too wild on the phone. Not at all. I, I woke up a few minutes ago and I felt for my bracelet. But when I found it was missing, I sort of panicked. Oh. And my father gave it to me. Oh. Could I have it back, my bracelet? Well, I... Please, I'll, I'll only be here overnight. I feel sort of lost without it. Well, all right. That'll be our little secret. Thank you. Is my mother still here? No. Dr. Rossi sent her home. She was very tired. I wish she'd take better care of herself. She was worried about you. Baby's due any minute, you know. There now. All set. Thank you. Thank you. What is your name? Miss Choate. I've seen you here before, haven't I? Yes. We've talked. Yes, I remember now. Would you like a sleeping pill? No, thank you. I don't need one. Well, if you want anything, just buzz. You're a very special patient here, Allison. Am I? Oh, yes. 
Dr. Rossi left instructions that we were to look in every chance we got. Did he? That was very nice of him. Now you try to get some sleep and I'll be back in an hour or so. Good night. Good night, thank you. I watch over those I love. Those whom I love.